you guys wanted it, so here it is. This is the review of Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell Conviction for the Xbox 360, presented by d-gu.com. I've been playing the game for over a couple of days now, and yes, it's pretty short, I will give it that, but Ubisoft did a great job on this game. Let's go ahead and get into the gameplay. Splinter Cell Conviction has come a long way since the old days of Sam Fisher. Covert Ops, there's no such thing in this awesome stealthy shooter. Even though this game is really good, it's a great action game. Now let me not say stealthy shooter, let me just say a stealthy action game. Why? Well, Sam Fisher doesn't really take this stealthy approach. Every time that you get into the game, you have this bleed in, bleed out feature. They'll let you know when you're in cover and when you're not in cover. What we're used to with Tom Clancy's double agent and etc, it's totally gone with this game. Why do I say that? Well, let me go ahead and get into the gameplay. Splinter Cell Conviction introduced a number of new gameplay features to the series, one of which is the Mark and Execute feature, which I'm pretty fond of, which allows the player to mark specific targets, such as enemies or objects, and shoot them when they burst through a door to window. The player can choose to prioritize these targets so that, for example, he could distract one guard by shooting out a light in his vicinity and then take out another guard. So pretty much Sam Fisher has become the next Jason Bourne. Another new feature is the last known position, which occurs when the player breaks the line of sight of an alerted guard. Then he creates a visual silhouette of where the guard thinks Sam is, allowing the player to strategically flank his enemies. Main target subjects, and you can use the player's abilities against them. The player can take hostage by the subject. Now, if this happens in co-op mode, the hostage partner can neutralize the subject by any means necessary, possibly even by lethal means. Another new feature includes the ability to interrogate characters, which I feel was my favorite part of the game. Even though the interrogating part seemed a little lengthy and it seemed more like cutscenes, it was pretty fun. Why do I say that? You can take multiple objects and the surrounding environments against them. Take an enemy, crack him's head up against a water post, I don't care. Do something that's going to kick his you-know-what. A crowd mechanic has been introduced, allowing Sam to vanish within a crowd if under pursuit. So it kind of gives you that Assassin's Creed feel. The environment is also used to project mission objectives and key plot points into walls in order to keep the player immersed in the gameplay during the narrative. So another perspective that I love to talk about is the fact that Sam Fisher can, well you guys pretty much got introduced this to other Sam games, a lot of other Splinter Cell games, but let's go ahead and get into that part. I like it when you can actually drop down on a character. It makes you kind of feel like you're playing Uncharted 2 or a little bit of MGS4. But when you're climbing on a pole or if you're kind of like hovering over an enemy, you can drop down, crouch, take him out, silent killer. I love it. Let's talk about the multiplayer. The multiplayer mode in Splinter Cell Conviction will involve split screen and online cooperative mode, plus denial ops mode. And the denial ops mode involves four player multiplayer modes that pit the players against AI in game modes such as Hunter, Infiltration, Last Stand and Face Off. Now, according to co-op game director Patrick Redding, the stealth in Splinter Cell Conviction is designed around the new core elements like Mark and Execute and Last Known Position. Now, a lot of people are saying that in this game that the whole Mark and Execute is going to be kind of a mm, little buggy, a little bit of an issue. But it's not. I'm just going to give you guys the roundabout since I've been playing it. It's really good. The game is great. Don't get me wrong, just the only thing that I have a problem with is the fact that the game is so short. But like I said before, the co-op is going to add a couple more hours to that, and that would probably be the reason why you want to go pick up this game. Now, the plot, let me just go ahead and give you the plot of the story. No spoilers, I'm just going to give you the roundabouts, okay? Splinter Cell Conviction takes place roughly about two years after the events of Splinter Cell Double Agent. Now, Sam Fisher has gone rogue since then. Now, after discovering that the death of his daughter, Sarah, was not an accident, hopefully Barotic can found in red tape or in pursuit of Sam. Now, Sam must use all the help he can get in this game, including former Third Echelon colleague, Anna Grimstor. Now, like I said, no spoilers, but Sam's friend, Victor Koss, in order to discover the truth behind the death of his daughter, these guys team up and they help Sam. Sam later discovers that Washington, D.C. is under an EMP bomb terrorist threat. So what else could Sam Fisher be going through right now? Well, he went through a whole lot. But they summed everything up in the game pretty well, but it was too short. And that is the only part that bugged me out about this game. I feel that Splinter Cell Conviction is going to turn heads and it's going to be a great seller for the Xbox 360. 
Will it be an awesome seller? I don't think so. A lot of people are going to be probably down about that. But more people are looking for the co-op era in this game. So I give Splinter Cell Conviction mm, an 8.7. I have to do it, you guys. I can't give it a full 9 and I can't give it a full 10. But that's my honest opinion since I've been playing the game. And I really do enjoy it. I really do like it. So I hope you guys like my quick yet fun Tom Clancy Splinter Cell Conviction review for the Xbox 360.